What's up, guys? Welcome to our Trash Talk podcast. I hope you're all doing very well today. I'm doing very well. And the most important thing, which we all want to know, JJ, are you doing fine today? I am, actually. JJ is doing fine today. That is a good thing. That's very surprising, isn't it? That doesn't happen too much. But no. that means this this week's podcast can only be good, man. It's always good when you're doing fine throughout the whole thing. It, bar- it can barely go wrong, right? Uh, we got some really fun stuff this week, don't we? Yes. It, we're basically looking at one of our favorite topics, which we like to ramble and talk about a lot. Which is also why today will be the first time that actually both of our topics are kind of the same thing. Kind of the same thing, but different aspects of it. Yes. So, um, today we're going to talk about time travel. Time travel. And we'll start with the fun and random stuff, and later on, after the halftime break, go... Uh, into the more sciencey part of it. Yeah, but no one doesn't want to hear about nothing about serious science stuff right now. We just want to have fun, all right? So yeah, time travel. If you could time travel, right? What like how would the world look if we could just time travel? Like let's not, let's not set any boundaries right now. Future, okay. past, uh h- however much we want, wherever we want. That's actually uh already the first very important question just in general. If you had the choice, would you rather time travel to the past or the future? Um, could I do it repeatedly as much as I want to, or just one time and then stay there? Um, I would say one time, and you can choose whether you stay or go back. But I can't for go, the sake of the argument right now. But I can't go like uh, back again. I can, I can only for go the sake once. of this argument. Let's right. say you can only go once. Past, definitely past, because I believe if if you can find the right period of time and. Uh, the past were, would have been a lot better time to live in, especially for me. I, I mean, go- as I said, you could return back. I could return back easy. Just, yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I, I definitely think that the that life in the future looks more dire than it does now. Um, and I, yeah, I'd like to live in. If I if I had to choose between living in the future or the past, I'd pick the past. I go two hundred years back. Uh, that would be pretty good. I mean slavery and shit but yeah but I mean us being heterosexual white males is yeah. kind of you know we never disclosed that I'm white did we not did we, we did not we only disclosed that you were white at one point oh well it's out of the box now oh shit now, now I'm not a fan favorite anymore oh yeah, I'm white also love how you telepathically uh, asserting that I'm uh, heterosexual oh right sorry He's asexual, I'm heterosexual. <laughs> That's, it's, I mean, you were right, but <laughs> I was just saying, nice telepathy there. Okay. Um, <coughs> Making past. assumptions. Yes, I would travel to the past and live in the past. Be a farmer in the good old days, you know, having a, having a big old ranch before there was 300 million people over the country of the United States of America. There's like a, I don't know, like, like two million, couple hundred thousands, maybe. Like there's space as much as you want to, right? So, uh, I definitely go back to the past. Much simpler days, no technology, no internet, no YouTube money. I will go to the future. Um. So, I would of course go to the future. Of course you would. Uh. Yes. Just to have a person that I am. Uh. I would probably want to go, assuming that the human race makes it off planet for more sustainable amounts of time than just going back to the uh, going to the moon or the ISS once and then going back yeah assuming that we actually colonize other planets I would love to go to like a colony on another planet that's also maybe not as densely populated as current day Earth and go to Mars I mean if we could like recreate the atmosphere and a bit of basic fauna sure I mean a uh, floor fauna it doesn't really matter that much it, does it not I mean, ecosystem, right? Yeah. That's sure. not much of an ecosystem going yeah, on. Yeah, flora and fauna, sure. On Mars, no, everything. Just basically the environment to recreate it as much as possible on, on Earth, right? It shouldn't, it shouldn't have to be necessarily identical to Earth, but it should definitely, uh, yeah, serve good living conditions for us humans. So, uh, are you saying that you would travel to the future just so you could leave Earth entirely, whereas I'm going back to the past to a better world? to live on Earth and don't even think about space travel and all that bullshit. I love space travel, by the way. I'm just assuming a role right now. I mean, 
the thing is, right, the past, while we don't know necessarily every intricate detail about it, yeah. we do generally know a lot of stuff about the past. That's true. And we can only presume things about the future just to be able to see it would be very interesting. And um, in most media depictions, for example, of the future, a lot of times when humans go out to space, that is because they completely fucked up Earth. Yeah. That's the big reason why, if I want to go that far in the future, I probably wouldn't want to be on Earth. Exactly. But just like you're saying, like going to the future carries a lot more risk with it because you don't know what's happening. Like you could be, like you could go 50 years in the future and find yourself in a nuclear wasteland. I would probably go further into the future, but yes. Also, the risk always is that humanity, if I'm going like a few hundred years, might not exist by that point. Exactly. See, we're we're. But as uh, I said, it's not necessarily a one-way trip. So yeah, we're a point. We're at a point in time right now, and this is why I want to go back to the past. The future is more uncertain than it ever was. So you're afraid of uncertainty, is what you're saying? I'm I'm saying that there is a a chance that is too high for me to ignore that at whatever point uh, I'm going to choose in the future that you know humanity will just not exist anymore because it's a it's a matter of time before some bullshit happens. Right. Also, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the science stuff just yet, nope. but um, if I were to go to the future, would I assume that I'm going to a um, possible future or to the future as it definitely will be by the time? Because information about the future let's, will be way more useful yeah. if it were going to happen exactly that Let's way. not going to do timeline stuff right now. Yeah, that's we're gonna, what I We thought. are going to get into that later on, but... Let's just say the the future that it would just play out to be if not if if we just lived on into it. Okay, so because then if we go just a bit to the future, I mean, there is always the idea of going to the next week and just getting a lot of numbers and going yeah, back. No, that's what I was about to say. Like uh, going to the future will give you a lot more advantages. So the question just is: if you could only travel once, would you rather see something that you couldn't normally see in your lifetime, which could either be the future or past? Yep. Or would you just go a week into the future to get lottery numbers I mean, and I just could... win a lot of money and live a really chill life? If I have one time to do that and I like I couldn't go back in the past and live there, I would do that. Like I would just I would just go get me some big time money. Like I like if in two thousand and ten you would have traveled five years in the future and found out that you'd invest a thousand dollars in Bitcoin, you'd be a millionaire by now. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. Things like that. You, you need to know that, but you don't know that at the time. Like, there's something out there that we can invest in right now, and in five years we'll be rich as fuck. Yeah, definitely. So, I, I guess I do that. Yeah, I go to the future, you know, get myself some financial information, uh, go back and, yeah, make that happen. Because, I mean, that's that's a whole life of, just, of money right there. And, I mean, going back to the past one time to see something that you could see in a museum. Yeah, although uh, there is a thing about people suddenly coming to wealth and being worse of afterwards, but if you go far enough, you could just get, like, a lot of information where you could just resupply if you actually do that's crash a, That's burn. another topic, though, but yeah. Yes, we, I know. You could go, you could travel, like, a month or, like, a couple of months, get the lottery numbers for a couple of weeks, win it every single time. Yeah. That would not be suspicious at all. Or keep a long-term option, like have the lottery numbers, but also have like stocks and shit. stocks over ten years. Yep. That's if, what I if, if you happen to spend all your money, which yeah, diversify it. I suppose we which, wouldn't do that. Diversifying is always a good tip, independently of time travel. Yeah. When you're investing, but especially when traveling <laughs> through time. Yeah, Believe I mean, it. If you are gonna uh, travel through time and just get information about the stocks, yeah, and you're always perfectly investing. Yeah, that's not going to come off well, is it? Is it? You, people are going to get suspicious about someone just suddenly getting all the right stocks oh. and shit. Oh, that what will seem like insider information and shit. Oh, what they're going to do? They're going to investigate you and freeze your money till the investigation is done. I mean, they they're gonna accuse me of, shouldn't find anything. They're going to accuse me of time traveling? Legitimately? No, they're going to uh, they're gonna accuse you of having insider contact in, in the industry, knowing about mergers in the... Put me in the front of the shit, which is also illegal to them. Yeah, uh, put know. me in front of the Supreme Court for time traveling. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. 
And, and you, you are an illegal time traveler. Yes, exactly. We're gonna build a wall around you. Ex- just oh. Around you. <laughs> like we could, we could, we could build a time wall. Oh, I don't so. think we could, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting concept, actually. Time wall, because we build wall in spaces all the time. Wait, but if we had it, I mean, a time wall would theoretically be a thing that we're I mean, getting into the science part. Do you notice that? Yeah, but I mean, it's not necessarily. Too much about the actual reasonable, realistic science. Yeah, all right. It's more like bullshit science yeah, that's stuff. that's true. But I have actually seen in Doctor Who they did the thing where oh, they couldn't... Oh, God. I know, you don't like it. Uh, but where they actually had some... This is the, this the point where you can stop the video and just skip 10 minutes. Like, there are timestamps in the video. To the next top. Yeah, you'll see it on the left side of the screen right now. Just... Go to go to the halftime show. We got some interesting. It's gonna be a lot better than this shit. All right, you want to continue? What I was gonna say is that in Doctor Who they actually had a time wall kind of mm-hmm. because they had like a barrier that prevented time travelers from going back to uh, the. You know, no one's listening. You know, no one's listening to you and I because people have all skipped to the halftime show. But I yes, I know what you're saying. Uh, I was just gonna say that that was yeah. actually a thing that happened in that show. Because you mentioned it and yeah, thought should, it was an interesting concept. I mean, for, for real, it would be an interesting concept if it happened, like, in actuality. But what I want to know is, like, you proposed the idea of being able to travel only once, but let's say you have unlimited time. You got your own time machine. Yeah, as I said, that was just for the sake of the previous time. Yeah, it's, you can do whatever you want to do. Just have a yes. go. That would be pretty nice, right? The question then would be, would you... Travel around just like forever, just searching out interesting events. Or would you at one point find a time where you're like, I'm comfortable here and just settle down? Here's my question, all right? Can I keep all the stuff that I bring from a time and bring it back to another time? Because I'd go to the future, get filthy rich, and then settle in the past. That's what I would do. I mean, depending on how you assume the time machine works, uh, that would be very reasonable if you. Oh, I'm not going to say if you assume Terminator style because that doesn't make sense. Let's just say you can keep anything that's on your person. I was about to say, if you assume like a time machine that's like, like from the movie The Time Machine, or I right. think it was a book about that as well, but anyways, where it was basically not a lot of space in there. Exactly. So I'm jumping to the future, uh, like like a couple of months, picking up all the lottery numbers, coming back to the present, winning all the pots, taking all his money, like in a... Ch- like. Maybe get yeah. a check or something to keep it on my on my person. Got like and a briefcase then, full of like, what is it, fifty, hundred dollar bills somewhere? Like Was yeah. fifty sized? That's five hundred. Is there? He's there. I don't know. I've never had one. Yeah, I was about to say, we're not that rich. <laughs> Leo, let's, we're actually, we're not rich to begin with. We're not, we're not rich at all. That's what we we're do. We're also not Richard. <laughs> oh, gosh. Richard. Hate, that's what we do. I uh, hate how bad my puns are, but I love bad puns. <sighs> yeah, that's... Okay. Uh, that's what we do YouTube do. Yeah. Because of the riches. Yep. That's, that's, that's why we do it. We don't... Like, it's not like we like this or it's entertaining because we, we don't love you people. We just do it for the money. I'm joking, by the way. That's going to come up really well, yes. I know. Um, usually we don't edit podcasts, but I might edit that out. I may also not do that. Because, you know, we, we're doing this live. We're actually not doing this live, but yes. Are we not doing it live? Right now, we're doing it live. It's not live streamed, though, so... Yeah. If the viewer of our podcast time-traveled in the past to the point of this recording, would it be live? Yes, it would. See? So now... We are talking about time-traveling, so we are doing this live. Are we just confirming that humans never invented time travel by saying that no one actually appeared here to witness this historical moment? Yes. Or Fuck. Or we just confirming that... <laughs> Or just confirm that no fucking person in the world watches our videos. I mean, come on. That what? Which of those is more likely? The time travel or no one watches our videos? I'm pretty sure the time travel. <laughs> Probably. I mean, <laughs> also, who who would watch our videos and have the capacity to build a time machine? Are you just insulting our viewers? No, I'm just saying. Like, who hangs on YouTube when they could? Just as well go down to the basement and build a time machine. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not having to go at people or anything. But I'm just saying. I mean, if I had the scientific mind to actually build a time machine, would probably still consume a YouTube. lot of entertainment media, yeah, including YouTube. We are getting off the of the point hardcore right now, off the topic. But that's what the podcast is, isn't it? Yes. Also, we're talking about 
theoretical scenarios involving time travel, which this kind of was. Yeah, that's true. So go to the future, get all kinds of money, rake in the dough, go back to the past, and settle and be filthy rich. Yeah, I, I like the idea kind of of like grabbing some futuristic technology, going like way in the past, and yeah. just basically being a god. Also, if you assume the bootstrap paradox, that could be if you, again, assume time travel is real, and that the bootstrap paradox applies, that could be how the Egyptian gods, for example, got into being, because just people traveling back in time, yeah. showing tech to the people, they mean like, you are gods. You are gods. That's why they always depict it with, like, with like uh, halos and technology and shit in the, on the paintings and all. That happens a lot around the world. Um, I mean... That would also explain the animal heads. I mean, that's a thing on YouTube, right? The horse mask yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's how that happened. But uh, <laughs> one thing that I wanted to know is like, uh, could would affect would like things that you affect in the past still have effect an effect on you once you travel back uh, to the future? For example, could I go back to like the seventh century and uh, marry a queen, and then I go to the fourteenth century and like, be my own great-great-great-great-grandfather and still be king? I mean, that's more of a scientific question already, but... Yeah, but it's fun. I mean, the idea would definitely make sense, again, depending on what rules you go by, which, I mean, there are no actual, like... There are not too many actual reasonable assumptions about what would be the case. Yeah. So, if we go by, like, media depictions, both versions exist. Yep. And um, if we assume that you can change the past, we're running into all those fun paradoxes. Yeah, exactly. You know what? We've got to talk about some of those in the science part, aren't we? Yeah, I think we could go to the also, halftime show. Also, one more thing I'd like to know. Like, uh, what would be really great if you could, like, whenever you travel in time, you could have, like, the settings on your time machine. Where you can just basically pick the rules, like you're playing an arcade, <laughs> like you're playing an arcade game. Yep. You're playing. Okay, this is how it works. This is how this is how this paradox is gonna work. Out. Also, that you have be... to throw in a penny every time you time travel. Yes, of course. <laughs> and it's gonna be worth a lot more, like in some time period, as it's gonna get because of inflation. Yeah, but I mean, it's... so like in some time periods, you're gonna you're gonna have to throw in like a thousand dollars. But still, if you are a time traveler who abuses their power to gain money, yep. you're going to be filthy rich anyways. It's it doesn't gonna, matter. It's going to be alright. <laughs> I... Also, if you go to, like, the present day or the future, there's going to be, like, a slot for, like, your fucking credit card or something. Yeah. You can just put in your credit card number and it will automatically deduct it from your account. But when yeah, you go sure. to the past, it's just a slot just, for pennies. Yeah. <clears throat> just, like, scanning, <laughs> scanning your eye. Yeah. And then, uh, this this money we're gonna... Like, a far-flung future just yeah. automatically pays from whatever way. account you have. Uh, do you want to go to the halftime show? Sure. It's going to be interesting. All right. Do you want to explain what we got planned? Yeah, so we recently did the thing where Alex had to get movie titles or movie plots based upon the titles. Yeah. So this time around, we kind of flipped the script on that, and he's going to tell me some sports terms. I don't know. Did you specify in football specifically? Or did it's you... going to be football terms. Okay, football terms, and I have to guess what they're about, and I don't know shit about football. Yeah, he's going to... Except for all that stuff that he constantly ta- talks about, but I don't remember most he's of He's going to have to tell me what this stuff means. Right? He, I got I got seven, I believe. Yes, it's seven terms. I wrote down seven football terms. I'm going to name them to you, and you're going to tell me what do you think... That is, and what's up with that, alright? The first one is Nickelback. I think you actually mentioned that to me. I besides, do think so, too. And besides that being a band name, of course, <laughs> yep. um, that it was like, it was related to like the formation thing where I think the Nickelback has something to do with like five people being in the back yes. or something. <clears throat> and that's what they call it Nickelback because, you know, nickel, five cents. Exactly, that's what it was. It was when the fifth, when a fifth defensive back gets on the field, he's called a nickel, and the sixth one was called a dime. Yes, exactly. So, that, I, so yeah, I told him that like once when I explained him something about man. Yeah, and that was relatively recently, so I remember yeah. that. All right, the next one is sack. S a c k, sack. If. You would have spelled it without the K, would have said it had to do something with sacrificing a player or something to win the play, but <laughs> not not like sacrificing as in killing them. <laughs> That's like sending them somewhere or something, but with the K? Yep, with a K, a sack. 
I would assume that they don't have literal sex on the playing field because that would be weird and I've never seen that. <laughs> yep. Um, Some of the players' pants look like that. I don't know, maybe... I, I mean, I'm just wildly guessing because I don't know. So maybe it's like the uh, position, like the way like the player positions their arm when they hold the ball. Nope. <laughs> like they're putting it in the yeah. sack. But that's a good try, though, because they have like four points on the ball and they have a specific way to carry it. A sack is when the quarterback gets tackled before he can pass the ball. It's okay. called a sack because the offense uses, lo- loses yards because they're going to have to start the next play from that point. Okay. All right, next one is, it's actually two, and it's a bit of a pun because uh, you don't know this, but as we're recording this podcast, we are both wearing the same shirt. Yes, we and are. And it's an ACDC shirt. Yes. And Back then, in yeah, black. And what I wrote down is OCDC, and there's a slash in there too, so it's OC slash DC. It's two different terms, but they're kind of related, and it's football. What do you think it means? I would assume, as there is a slash in between, that it has nothing to do with OCD. No, it does not have anything to do with OCD. That's your personal problem. Yeah, no, kind of, yeah. It is, too. Um, wait, so I would assume because of the O and the D that it has something to do with offense and defense? Yeah, that's pretty and, good. And uh, now the question is, what could the C stand He's for? He's there. Uh, oh, gosh. Also, like how it's really basic terms for everyone who knows the first thing about football... But for you, it's like, this is... I don't know shit. I don't, I don't know. Carry? Like, nope. in a video game where they carry something? Nope. It stands for coordinator. It's the offensive and defensive coordinator who are oh. the coaches, you know, secondary to the head coach, who are responsible for coordinating the offense or defense. Yeah, well, the letter C, I could have probably yep. at some point come to the conclusion that it's a coach, so that's I mean, it makes sense, something. Right? Yeah. Alright, so the next one is West Coast. Yeah, it's the Western Coast of the United States. Yeah, it's a football term, though. Oh, uh, I don't know, the western side of... Wait, that doesn't make sense. The right side of the field? No. <laughs> That's a good idea. Oh, Just call it, like, when there's, like, the ball goes out of the, of the field, it's like, when you he, went like, over the west yeah, coast, you went over like, the east coast. Like, like, when he throws it out of the stadium and it, <laughs> it plunges into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. That's called a west coast play. That sounds reasonable. Does it? No. All right, here's, here's what... All right, this is a bit more advanced, but the west coast is an is a scheme of offensive football invented by no other than the man Bill Walsh himself, who I talked about in a video that we made at one point about, you know, if you could have three people. Oh, yeah, room. yeah. Bill Walsh. Um, the West Coast offense consists of mainly short, quick passes over the middle of the field and uh, mixing in a good run game. And it's probably the most dominant offense that has ever existed in football. It's a great okay. scheme. And it's called West Coast because the dude was a coach in San Francisco. Okay, that makes sense. And there's always this this story where he was almost coaching Cincinnati, and then it would have been known as the Ohio River offense. Okay. Thank God it didn't because 49ers, all right? West Coast. Okay, next one, you might be able to get this, is Senior Bowl. Wait, so I know that the Super Bowl is a thing that they do every year, so I assume that it's basically the same thing, but with older players? It's exactly the opposite. But didn't you say it was called the Senior yes, Bowl? Yes, it's called the Senior Bowl, but I tricked you there a little bit. It's not older players, it's younger players, it's college seniors. Oh. The Senior Bowl is a game held for col- like for college players who are going to come out like that same season from college and enter the NFL draft. Okay. It's kind of like the Pro Bowl, which is, you know, like the get-together of the best NFL players of that year, playing like a game for fun. And the Senior Bowl is kind of the same thing for college players, like the best players to showcase themselves, and it's like a fun game. So, yeah, they're showing off to be drafted. For example, yeah, sure. Okay. That's the senior blight. The next one, like I like the last one, but the next one is a free safety. Okay, so if I remember correctly, the safety is a player. Yes. That uh, wait, I don't exactly remember what he does, but he's a player on the field. So uh, I assume as there's a lot of people engaging with each other and like hugging stuff. <laughs> don't I call it that. It's, <laughs> it's tackling, all right. I assume that a free safety would be one who is currently not engaged with anyone. Not, not, not as in, like, in his life, but as in, like, in the game. <laughs> We're not playing sarcastic ball out here, right? <laughs> <laughs> so a free safety is a safety who is not involved in, in contact. At the that's moment. what I pretty much said. That's yes, what you said, but that's yes. not true. 
A free safety is simply a position because there's two types of safeties. There's a strong safety and a free safety. Why is the other one not called the weak safety? Well, I do not. I can't tell you that. But well, I, I could tell you that, but it would be like way too complicated. Free safeties pretty much all the time. Uh, the last man down the field, like for the like to the last guy to defend the deep pass. He's got the free safety. He's got to basically basically defend the touchdown. Okay. That's that's what the free safety as well. The strong safety, who is lined up on the strong side of the formation, which I, I believe I broke that down. What that means to, you. like at one point the strong side of the offensive formation, uh, he's playing in the box, which is closer to the to the ball and preventing the run game. And the, and the free safety is kind of the the last guy, like deep in the deep zone. Yeah. So he's basically the contingency plan. Yeah. To pretty much that's what he does. Yeah. All right. And the last one. This is gonna be good. It's called a butt fumble or should I be more precise the butt fumble so I would assume that it's when someone loses the ball because they fall flat on their ass no but <laughs> you're getting really close try again it's I mean you do know that a fumble is when someone loses the ball yes all right a butt fumble or <laughs> I, I said the butt fumble because that was one specific occurrence that happened in the NFL once uh, and it was a game I'm pretty sure it was between the Jets, New York Jets, and New England Patriots. And uh, the Jets quarterback, who is already known for being a, like a complete clown and being made fun of all the time, um, he kind of missed, he, he forgot what he had to do on the play pretty much, and he just he just tucked the ball and just ran straight forward to get some yards. And he just ran into the back or the butt of, of the guy in front of him, who was like a 300-pound offensive lineman. So he just ran into his butt fumbled the ball and fell straight down. It's, it looks hilarious. And I'm going to show that scene to you once we get off the air tonight. That's okay. all I got for, so far for the football lips. I think you did quite well. Uh, you did know basic stuff like the nickelback, like the, the safety, the position, and, the, and the, what a fumble means. I uh, didn't think I was going to get you that that good with like words like sack or anything. But, you know, if you don't know it, you can you can't say what it means. That's yeah, the same struggle here with the movies yeah. where it was like, Okay, I, also there I put like one in there that was intentionally misleading, but yes. like some of those were relatively basic, but it's like, how do you make a logical assumption based on a movie title? The man, the man from Earth. Yeah, that was that was misleading, but I mean like, exactly. you could have gotten like Predator or something, but it's also like, you just have to make assumptions. Yeah, just like, really... I, like, what the fuck is a sack? <laughs> it's a sack. That's what, I, that's what, I don't know why they call it a sack, it's just a sack. But it, did, it wasn't always called a sack. It was actually, the term was actually coined by a specific player. His name was Deacon Jones, and he, he hit the quarterback and tackled him so many times, and he coined the term sack. Okay. It was like in the 1950s and 60s and whatnot. He was pretty good. Anyways, let's maybe go back to the time traveling, this time a bit more science-y. I think you're missing something out here. Like, we got oh, the facts of the week coming up. Here's my a, bad. Here's a fact for you guys. JJ has the schedule of our podcast. He's taking the notes and it's in a sc- on a screen in front of us, <laughs> and he's looking at it at all times, and he still can't figure out the the exact order of what we're gonna do. <sighs> fact of the week, please, JJ, present me with your fact of this week. Yeah, it was kind of bad. Um, it was. So my fact of the week, actually, this time is a bit more personal than the other ones we've done so far. That's going to be bad. And it's just a thing I wanted to put out there, but I didn't think warranted it, its own that's, video. or That's what I always topic. do, though. Um, and that is that, as of us recording this, yesterday I dungeon mastered my first D&D game, and it went relatively well, but I just wanted to mention that. You're a sad person. Like you're you're like you're not sad. You're not feeling sad, but your existence is sad to people around you. Why? Because I gathered a group of people to play a tabletop role playing game. Possibly. Perhaps. Also, note a group of people. Yeah, probably in the same situation as you. Okay, my fact of the week, and uh, <laughs> be prepared, guys. Green is a more beautiful color than yellow. I would agree with that, but it is a subjective opinion. Do you think there's going to be anyone in the comments who's going to disagree with that? Probably not. I mean, there's probably someone... Probably not, right? Statistically speaking, you would assume, based upon our relatively small viewer base, that no. 
But in general, there are people that would prefer yellow over green. It's just a very small number of it's people. It's going to be a very small number of people. Also, because we both said it, confirmation bias is going to lead them to agree. <laughs> and I mean, it's a fact, I, right? That's not how confirmation bias works. Yeah, I know. Confirmation bias means that they tend to search for sources that they agree with and then yes. lend more credibility to those than to the ones they don't agree but with. But we are sources <laughs> that people agree with. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Your previous opinion doesn't matter. It's that your opinion about the source is formed based upon what they say, yes. not the other way around. But people wouldn't think about it, wouldn't ever, would ever think about green versus yellow until I brought it up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> green is more beautiful than yellow. It's a better color. You know, it's, it's more natural. It, it just looks better to the eye. And, you know, you, you really can't argue it. Yellow is a horrible color. I don't like yellow. I, I agree. It's so it's not a good color. I mean, there are, it's, of course, a situational thing, but in general, green is a nicer color than yellow. Yes. That's absolutely true. Okay, uh, now, if you will, you could go into the next topic, yes, which so is also the as topic. As I was saying, uh, we're getting into the second half of our time travel discussion. Because we can. And this time, it's the hard science stuff. Well, this is also the time where everyone shuts down their computer. At least skip to the song of the week. There's some good stuff in there. There's good songs in there. And also listen to the end of the podcast. All right. Do um, you want to get us started into anything specific? Like, you want to bring up something interesting? Or you want to hook on to what we did before and just kind of be a bit more serious about it? I mean, it would make sense to talk about the paradoxes. I mean, I mentioned two of them already, but... Maybe we should cover the basics first. Like the Banach-Tarski paradox? That's not related to time travel at all. But it's interesting. You just wanted to bring that up. I wanted to bring it up because this is probably my favorite paradox out there. Guys, go check out the Banach-Tarski paradox. Can we put the name on the screen right now? Sure. All right. He's going to do that. I'm not I'm not, I'm not. not editing the final videos. Uh, Banach-Tarski paradox. Check it out. It's, it's really interesting. You, you got to look at that. So, anyways... Um, First things first. Also, you're not going to be able to wrap your mind around that if your IQ is 160. I could wrap my mind around that my IQ is 156. Yeah, I could too, but I was exaggerating there. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, time travel is theoretically possible, and Einstein's relativity theory was kind of the first point where actual science like, suggested that it was possible, although he didn't directly state it, but you could extrapolate that it's possible yes. based upon that. Because, of course, what he said is that time is related to space and you can also bend time by, for example, moving fast. Yeah. So, just by you moving very fast, time passes slower for you in relative to the world around you. Yes. Which means the faster you go, the faster you basically move through time because you normally you move through time at a pace of one second per second, but if you were getting close to the speed of light, you could effectively travel to the future, although you would still basically be doing it the same way than usual, but because of the rate of the relativity, yes. it would just be as if just straight up jumping to the future. Right. What we need to understand to uh, grasp is that uh, the principle that time is relative to a certain point. Yes. Like, time is relative to, to space. Uh, and that's also how things happen, like astronauts, when they come back from space, they are literally a bit younger than they would be had they stayed on Earth. Although it's noteworthy that in that case, that is so minimal that it wouldn't really matter significantly. Yeah, that's true, but it's technically, that's technically how time, that's technically time travel. Yes, it's, it's technically also if you go on a plane, it's also technically time travel yes. by that logic, but again, it's... So insignificant that it just doesn't matter to our day to day life. Of course, yes, but they, I mean, you said it was technically, it was theoretically possible, which is true, but it's also being practiced, like technically. Yeah, but as practiced. I said, not to the degree which you normally think of when you hear time travel. Yeah, of course, when you hear time travel, you think about like a thousand years of the future or the past uh, by just whenever you want to. Also, um, you could use gravity to manipulate the times around you basically because that of course distorts time as well yes. which is also based upon relativity theory by gravity Albert Einstein um, and one thing that's also relatively noteworthy is that theoretically wormholes can exist yep. and those could link both different points in space as well as time allowing but, you to travel faster than the speed of light but like instantaneous yeah 
by basically instead of going through space, basically just there is always this thing when they to demonstrate it when they a fold a piece of paper and exactly. push a pen through it. So here's how this works, right? You 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 put up a piece of paper and like a regular piece of paper, and you and you'll and you'll draw like two dots on it, like fairly far apart, like on the one side and the other side, and you could draw a line between the two dots, and that's how you usually travel through space. That's how you get from one point to the other. And basically, what a wormhole does is it is it bends the the space in a way that if you would just fold over the paper to have the two dots that you drew uh, immediately touch each other, and then just and then travel will be instantaneous from one point to the other. Yes, and you, wormholes could theoretically also exist that link two different points in time together. Yes. So you could use those to time travel. And theoretically, there's also nothing that says that we couldn't artificially create wormholes, but of course we're nowhere close to that, and we don't even yet know if wormholes do exist, we just know that they theoretically could exist. Yes. It's uh, like we we are not getting close to harnessing the type of energy, though. Yeah. That we need for that. And so what I was saying, they could also naturally occur, though. Yes. There's which... interesting... Uh, like ideas about uh, the dark matter that's uh, you know in space. Yes, yeah, yeah, that holds the galaxies together. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of interesting. Like the, uh, I think there's a dark energy too. Yeah, it's dark energy too. Yeah. Uh, and that like all these types of things we haven't even begun to understand, and that could disclose a lot more information about you know the possibility of of time traveling. Yeah. So, there is definitely multiple ways one could theoretically time travel, but none that have actually been explored to a point where it would be usable, except for, as you, as we said, uh, the fact of just going fast. Right. But that's to no really... Re uh, usually not to any visible amount to begin with. Yeah, because it's... It, you can't, you, we're not getting close to moving at the speed of light. Yes. Because we literally matter. <laughs> yes, because we are made of matter. We are made of matter, so we can't do that. But uh, also, what would be a fun idea is I know this is not scientific anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, breaking a human down uh, into particles, like small particles. Yes. And then, like, teleporting. You mean that's how the teleporters in Star Trek kind of work? Yeah. I do not know Star Trek. I know. But I mean, they do also, like, basically take apart the human body yeah. and then. Based yes. upon the schematic of how it was, just put Resemble, it back together in a different exactly. place. Which also would be very interesting. Yes. That would just in general be more of a travel thing, though, than a time travel thing, necessarily. Unless, of course, you had, like, say, a wormhole. Yeah. And then you were just pushing it through there, in which case it would be time travel again. Also, you could just use that to store the basic schematic and, like, brainwaves and all that kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. About a person and just reassemble them in the future if we had the technology. Which, at that point, which it's links arguable to the idea, whether it's time travel or not. Yeah, which links to the idea of, like, uh, cryogenically freezing a body after he's died and preserving the brain. Yeah, the problem is just that you don't actually preserve the brain that well because yes. you're just destroying the cells by the extreme cold. Exactly. That's kind of, like, the, the main problem, the main part that we need to focus on would be preserving the brain, though. Yes. Because that could be transplanted into another body. Yeah, like, we could easily it, clone a new body for made of our original DNA. I mean, it might as well. We to. It might as well just be a robot. Doesn't matter. Yeah, but I'm saying in the future, by the time we would be able to transplant, yes, brain, of course, brain, we probably could clone a human body. I mean, we have cloned like sheep. Yes. And like uh, other relatively other, successful other mammals before. So, at the point where we could preserve the brain, like to a point, like where we could do that. Also note that uh, the cryogenics stuff that's going on these days is mostly a scam. Yeah, of course I know. That's Just I, while we were talking about it, we filthy, should probably mention that. That's filthy rich people being, you know, baited into believing that they could be brought back in 100, 200 years once the technology... I mean, you never know if it could happen. Yeah, but you would assume that by then the brain is so much destroyed that... If you could reconstruct it based on what they froze, you could probably just reconstruct it based upon records and shit. Yes, of course, but um, it's kind of uh, still an interesting thought. Yeah, the idea is nice, but again, it's not going to work. Not right now. Not In with the, the ones that are Yeah, on. the way they're doing it right now. Uh, but we're getting 
bit off topic right now. We are getting, we were talking about time travel before, but like time travel is one of those topics that interests us like at all times. It's one of those yes conversations that we can have at any point. This can always break out. It's like an allergy attack, you know. Time travel discussion. Yeah, with, I hate with Alex and attacks. JJ. That, <laughs> you get a lot of those too, because because JJ is allergic to everything. Did you know? Did you know that he was allergic to wheat? We mentioned that on a previous podcast, so they probably we did, did not mention in the know. podcast. We mentioned it in the gameplay video. We played Cookie. Clicker. Oh yeah, the like Cookie Clicker, and you mentioned he was allergic to wheat. And I was like, how that's, how is he baking cookies? That's still more li- most likely going up before the podcast, so. Yeah, people will know so by now. So if people do actually watch all our videos, they will of know. Of course they would know. And if they... If you did not, then go and watch it right now. I was going to say, if they just watch one video or two, if then they're just, not going to care about my allergies. Yeah, if they're not going to watch... They're probably not going to care either way, but... They're not going to care about you anyway, because I'm I'm the fan favorite. If, like, you could just die, I'll take over your room, uh, install Linux on your PC instead of using that filthy Windows 7. That that debate is coming down the road, by the Windows way. Windows 10, by the way, not Windows 7, but yes... I don't care. It gets worse and worse. I that that debate is coming, by the way, <laughs> and I'll just take over the channel. Like I mentioned, when I once I killed you in the cage match at a million. Oh yeah, right. That's a thing. That's a thing too. You need to watch the uh, milestone video to know what that that's all about. Oh uh, yeah, we do. Anyways, the match. we were talking about time travel, yeah. and you went off topic on talking about being off topic. Exactly. That's oh. also a thing that we can do sometimes. <laughs> yes. Uh. So now that we've covered most of the basics i mean we didn't want to go too in depth about it we're not right. that science focused and it's just the podcast yeah. if here's we the were thing. gonna go really yeah. in depth it would be its own video here's the thing though too you can like the, the stuff that we talk about you can't take that for like scientifically 100 percent accurate and whatever we mentioned that's all more or less from like experience not not, not time from experience but what he's trying to say is we didn't or, research this video and it's all from memory it's all it's basically all from memory and uh, don't like don't confuse us with like actual scientists who know what they're talking about. All right, we're so, not we're not we're not educated in that type. Of, it's just something that we we happen to know a lot about for the average person. But like when it comes down to it, we have no clue what we're actually doing. So um, now that we've covered the basics, we should. Oh, it will probably be interesting to go into the time travel paradoxes because. Yeah. That's the stuff that people always like about That's also time travel. Good. The grandfather paradox. Yes, the most well known one. Do you want to tell us what this is about? I kind of offhand mentioned it before when you were talking about traveling to the past, and yes. I said, I just said paradox. But uh, so the way it's usually proposed is that you travel back in time to the time when your grandfather had not yet. Uh, Married your, met your grandmother. Yeah, or at least they haven't conceived whatever parent of yours yes. yet. And you basically kill them before they have the chance yep. to create your lineage. Yeah. So the question is, like, if you did that and you assume that, of course, things you do in the past affect the present. Yeah, you could have never been born because your then grandfather wouldn't You could have never been born, you could have never traveled back in time, you could have never killed your grandfather, therefore you were born, and so on and so forth. Exactly. So would you be alive? Would you be dead? And, uh, would you pro- be shorting as time traveler? That's not a thing. Would you be? <laughs> would you be both? I mean, that's the thing with shorting as cat rides. We've mentioned that in before. In two states too. at once. Yeah, we've mentioned that before too. Oh, Interestingly we did, enough, did. we did we did name drop Schrodinger's cat at one point. <laughs> we need to we need to make a video. On we that. didn't actually name drop his cat. We just said shorting as cat. We don't know what his what its name was. <laughs> his name was uh, Cat. I now that's an interesting question as well. When he came up with that idea, did he name the cat in his head? <laughs> did he? He probably just named the cat. I don't think cat. there's any record because, of it. Because the cat was going to die anyway. A- anywho. Well, we're not sure. It was dead and alive at the same time until it was observed yep. in the hypothetical scenario, in we, which case it would decide whether it's dead or not. Yeah, we do need to... Uh, but, he, but if it wasn't dead, he would have probably done the shit again, right? Until it's dead. <laughs> I mean, that's the type of dude that Schrodinger was. All right, we're going to have to do a video on that, like, specifically at one point. Yeah, so, going back to Grandfather Paradox, yeah. um, basically, there's, I think, two ways that can be somewhat reasonably resolved. One of those being, I guess there's second like three, but... Alternate what, timelines. Yeah, wh- one would be that you just sort of can change the past and things always somehow end up happening the same way yes, they did. Yes, he comes back from the dead. Yeah, I mean, 
whatever you do in the, in yeah. the past. The it future. would be weird to assume that it somehow goes back to you existing, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, there is, of course, split timelines, which would suggest that you are from the original timeline, they are from the altered timeline by the point you traveled back. Yes. Which means that there would be no problem. Or there would be the third one where you just assume that it... That sounds a bit odd, but that it doesn't also, instantaneously yes. happen. So, basically... The state of the timeline just flickers for every time also, that happens. But of course, if a lot of people did that, then the timeline would just be really yeah. fucked up. I so that's not really that reasonable. Also, uh, notice how it only gets to be an actual dilemma once you travel back. Yes, because if you just you kill them and you just stay there, you'd be in that timeline and you could just live on. But no, that would still be a dilemma from the point on where you kill them because you. You're assume, not going back. You're not going back to the other, to the other timeline where that where that would yes, ever take you, effect on you being born. But if you assume that it does affect the future, then it also affects the future from which you travel back. That's the whole point about why it's a paradox. That would mean though, if you kill them, you would instantaneously have to vanish yourself. Yes, is what I was saying. Though. And that doesn't really work that way, now, does it? That's what I was saying. Though that's the question. We don't yeah, know how it would that's, work. That's what's called the paradox, folks. I mean, if you go by Back to the Future, then you slowly disappear and fade away from photographs yeah, and shit. Yeah, right. That's not gonna happen. And then you have to make sure that you don't hook up with your own mother, which is kind of weird to begin with. Mm, yeah, yeah. Marty, you f- motherfucker. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I've never, yep, I've never seen that movie before, but I know what it's about. Like, a little bit. Yeah, so, I- anyways, so, there's the Grandfather Paradox, there is um, the Bootstrap Paradox. Yep. Which, uh, do you want to explain that? Or you do it, you do it. I, th- I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking today, but anyways. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta learn. The bootstrap paradox basically says that, a common example is you basically, you are a huge fan of Beethoven's music. Yep. So, you dra- travel back to the past to meet your idol, and... Can we just go, like, I don't know, a bit more recent, like, can we just go jump on Joey because I didn't have to travel back to the past? Sure. Let's go Elvis, because then I'd have to travel back. Let's go Elvis. Okay, so... I like him more than Beethoven, like, for real. So, it kind of works better with someone where you don't have that, like, that much of photographs and stuff, but anyways. So, you travel back in time to meet your favorite musician. Yep. To just then realize that they don't actually exist. And then you basically put yourself in their place, release their works... Yes. And fabricate their backstory so that you basically become them... Yep. Which brings up the question, of course. How did you go back? Like, where does, in that case, Beethoven's or Elvis or whatever, yes. music actually originate? Because you've heard it basically from your past self, from the actual timeline, from yep. your future self, from your personal timeline, which that alone gets confusing, talking about time travel. Yep. Because we don't have enough tenses Possibly, for that. Possibly, uh, you know, Family Guide is something similar with creating the universe. Yes. Um... Uh, and the explanation, I think, was that it was originally all intended for exactly that stuff to happen. So originally, it was already planned out that all this, that you would travel back in time and do that stuff. And so it was already, you know, given that that was going to happen. Yeah, but now it gets fun. You, usually the concept is presented as, as I said, you travel back and you like invent something or some or create music or art or anything but what if you actually took an object to the past mm-hmm. for them to just be the object that you originally took to the past basically yeah so the same concept but with an object because then logically speaking the object doesn't have an origin point in the timeline yeah that's true because you know you it's kind of it's kind of circling Yes, exactly. It's certain from the point where you where you take it with you from the present and going back to the past, mm-hmm. and then it then it just sits there again. Also, somewhat noteworthy, one solution to both of the previously mentioned paradoxes actually is if you assume that time has more than one dimension. Yep. So that you assume you're only traveling in there's one a, time dimension, like a linear time. But the actual time stream, there's still one that is linear that you can travel. Yes. So, I would argue the best way to describe that is basically, you're watching like a TV show or a movie about time travel, and the one time dimension is the one that they screw around with in the show, yeah. and the other timeline is the one of of what you see on the screen in the 
order it yeah, unfolds. Yeah, time, exactly. And that is an interesting way to look at it, and that also makes make most time travel movies and TV shows make way more sense. Yeah, it does, but, it, like, all the time travel stuff that's depicted in the media is, is really hard to make, like, explain all of it, because... You know, you can't really You can't really wrap it. your mind around you it. You can't really explain all of it, so you just have to, like, enjoy it, like, accept that it doesn't make sense. It's like wrestling. Yeah, but, as I said, that would kind of explain the whole, like, meanwhile in the future kind of trope. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's what I was saying, all right? Um, I think we've been rambling on this for a while now. We didn't expect to talk about this for that much, but, as I we said... We kind this, of knew that it could go it, there. It right? happens. It just happens when we start talking about... Also, there were a lot of tangents that were not yeah. directly related. We're going to leave them all in, though. I'm not cutting the podcast. Yeah, of course. I, uh, it should... wouldn't make sense if you were yep. to cut those out, because we're referencing them later on as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we should get to the end of this, because we're hitting 50 minutes pretty soon. Yes, so, uh, the last segment song is the song of the week. Uh, who's going to get started? Um, I'm indifferent about it. Are we going to uh, play a game of rock, paper, scissors right now? No, you just go first, because I was talking quite a bit uh, That before. is true. I'm going first. Okay, my song of the week is... Can you guess it? No, you can't. Because I can't guess of, it. How would you, right? You can't travel <laughs> to the future, see what I said, and then tell me what it was. Or can I? Can you, though? What no. is it? Uh, no, I can't. But see, that's, that's a proof of time to I been yet. I have reason to believe that it's one of about, oof, like, 500, 600 songs it that is. I know you really like. That is true. But I'm not going to list them all right here. <laughs> well, also, I could assume that it's not one that you've previously used. Yes, that is true, which would exclude two songs. Congratulations. Yes. It's Bedlam Bridge by Midnight Oil. It's a good song. I would not have guessed that. It's a good song. It's probably not even been one of my first ten guesses. It's probably... I know that. It's probably my favorite song by Midnight Oil. Okay. I would have, like, I know there's, like, Beds Are Burning and yes. Dead Heart, but it's a good, I mean, it's a good song. Yeah, I, I'm it's not It's probably my favorite song of Min at all. So, um... All I'm saying. All right, what's your, what's your song of the week? I, for the song of the week, have something that's actually somewhat uh, inspired by some of the other videos we did, which may or may not re- release before or after this. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is The Gambler by Kenny Rogers. All right. That kind of plays into we one could of the have previous podcast in the when, gambling podcast when we talked yeah. about gambling I mean we don't have to make them all match up with the topics I mean nah, that's the much. school shooting just happened that to be was, the school topic that was kind of unintentional uh, <laughs> so yeah it kind of links back to that and also to a video that might come out after this was which was the higher or lower games that was called Yep, we played the higher or lower game. Where Kenny Rogers actually came up like twice, I think. A lot. And he was he was searched less than people who are absolutely un- undeserving of being searched yeah. now because they make music. He lost to Skrillex. He which... makes music with computers. Like how Ooh. is that a... I mean I could like I could do that if you if I wanted to. I could in my life never learn to play uh, a musical instrument like someone who's just talented to do yeah. it. But I could learn to do it with a computer. I also never got how DJs get famous and shit, or generally how what they do, because usually what they do is they're standing in front of a table. Yes. With, they basically create a place in advance, everyone can do that. Yep. And then sometimes they, like, move the discs around a bit, yep. but usually just dancing behind their desk. Yeah, just turning up the volume and the, the synthesizer and all that shit. Yeah, but like all that's that all stuff that you could automate yep. easily. Yep. Also, you just set up a playlist, let it run over speakers... You're done. You all don't the need work, a DJ. All the work they do is basically they rip a song off of a CD, put it onto their playlist, and remix it. Sometimes they don't even remix it, but yes, usually they do so to some know. degree. Yeah, that's true. Right, uh, are we going to rant more, about more music or only cut this at some point? I think uh, it's pretty deep in, so... It's for that time. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all the stereotypical bullshit. I'm begging you. Uh, I need this money. I'm in college. There's no other thing I can do with my life. And I believe that's it. That's it.